fast to myself. Short, high. Short, oh. Like that. So, <laughs> ball went over my porch. Hey guys, what's up? It is Coach Mara. Welcome back to the channel. I am out here in my lovely backyard today. Oh my gosh, I'm just getting hit by a tree. And today is going to be the start of my Volleyball 101 series. So, today we are first going to cover passing. And in this 101 series, we're going to cover all the four main areas of volleyball. So, passing, setting, hitting, and serving. So, today is passing. And with that, let's jump on in. Hey y'all, what's up? It's editing, Mara. Hi, I am here to preface this video with a few things. Uh, number one, these are not real glasses. They are blue light glasses because I am spending all of my days on a computer. Thank you, Zoom University. Number two, I am so sorry about all of the freaking noise in the background. I filmed this outside where I had a bunch of construction work going on in my house. But also, I think like two doors down, my neighbor decided to use a jack saw or something. I have no idea. Someone's dog's barking. There's cars going off. There's cats in my back. Ah. I'm so sorry if it's hard to hear me. I'll be popping in here and there just to like fill in some gaps I may have missed. But just thought I'd let y'all know. Okay, so the first thing... You need to know, sorry, the audio is going to be through my AirPods today because I'm outside uh, and there's some construction going on in my house right now. So, it's a little chill. I'm gonna bubble this up. This is my absolute coaching fit. Nine times out of 10, you will always see me wear this. <laughs> okay, so the first thing you wanna think about when you're passing is you wanna work from the bottom up. The fundamentals of a good pass are nice and controlled and good technique, like with most things in volleyball. So, the way you want to start off by learning how to pass properly is by looking at your feet. Okay, you're gonna notice I'm doing a bunch of demonstrations, but you can't see my feet because the way I angled this, like very, very obscure camera angle, it wouldn't let me get both my legs in the shot and my torso the where I was filming it because I didn't want to shoot through the glass that we have on our porch. It's a whole thing, anyways. So you can't really see my legs at all through here. I have tried to include some videos of me um, doing some of these techniques that I'm describing outside of that in separate shots, but I'm so sorry. I did the best I could. I'm gonna try and mess around with it, see if I can find another setup that'll work, but I swear they're there, I swear. Most kids, when I see them pass for the first time, or they haven't been taught properly, they will stand, like I am right now, flat-footed, pretty much nothing's really happening. In volleyball, you want to do the complete opposite of that in something we call an athletic stance, which is feet shoulder width apart. So best way to do that is to put your feet together, spread your toes out, spread your heels to in line with your toes. Pilates teacher taught me that once. I thought it was kind of handy. So that's about shoulder distance apart and you want your knees to be bent. This allows you to have more agility and have more control about your movements. When your knees are locked, you're gonna have a harder time of explosive action to either side of you. So you want your knees bent, you want that nice athletic stance, but the thing in volleyball you also want to think about is where your weight is distributed over your feet. So most people will say, I want you on your toes. No, I don't want you to be on your toes because if you're gonna stand on your toes, you're gonna fall. I want you to think of me sliding a book underneath your heel, so this is your heel, sliding a book just underneath so where your heels are just off the floor and your calves are engaged and your quads are engaged, so your thighs. This will give you that sense of like, you feel pretty steady but if I came up behind you and tapped you on the shoulder, you'd feel like you're gonna fall, but you're not actually gonna fall. The difference between that and on your toes is when you're on your toes, you have no balance. It's too unstable. But if your weight is on the ball of your foot, then you have the ability to run this way, run this way, jump forward, jump backwards, 
there's a lot more control you have and a lot more options you have on a quick basis, which is all you need in volleyball. You need to respond as fast as possible to what you're receiving from the other side. So, now that we have our feet sorted out, we're gonna move all the way up to our platform or our hands. So in a pass or a bump or a forearm pass, you'll see I wanna do it automatically. So what you're gonna do is either one of two things. So when I normally teach passing, I normally teach the way I was taught. So I would do, put your left hand out like this, if you're right-handed. If you're not right-handed, you just do it the opposite way. Also known as left-handed. What are you talking about, Laura? <laughs> you put your left hand out like this, and you put your right hand on top of it, where your fingers kind of overlap, like so. And then you bring your thumbs together. I talked about this in my last video, where I have this weird thumb thing. Go check that out. I'll link it in the cards for you guys. Um, you want to go one on top of the other and bring your thumbs together. Another way you could do it is what I've seen mostly in middle schools is you make a fist with your thumb on top and you just wrap the other hand around it like so. So here to here. That's another way you can do it. I find it's less control you have. You'll find this is a theme throughout here. Um, I also like to talk about whenever I'm coaching, girls who I've coached in the past always make fun of me for talking about this, but it's actually, I don't know if it's factually true, like scientifically true, but to me it makes sense. So when you are passing, you have a lot of bones in your arms and your hands. So the more, the flatter the surface and the less bones that are hitting the ball, the more accurate you're going to be. So what I mean by that, when I say I prefer this way, as opposed to this way, as opposed to this way, you see my knuckles are really sticking out over here. It's really hard for me to get a nice flat surface for the ball to hit off. But when I do it like this and I fold in, it's easier for me to straighten my arms and hit that ball where I want it to go. When you've chosen which way you like, that's just a personal preference. The next thing you want to think about is how this all works as one thing. So, oh my god, running into a tree again. So. The way I like to think about it, and a way one of my coaches taught me when I was playing, is that whenever you're about to pass a ball, you kind of want to take a step in, bring your hands together, and bump upwards and to a diagonal to your setter. Okay, I don't know why I breezed over this so quickly. This technique of stepping into the ball before you actually pass it is something that's really helpful and for a lot of kids it was really helpful for me because I had a really tough time bending my legs to get enough power to push the ball far enough. So one of my coaches said, hey, try this. Whenever you the ball is coming at you either from a serve or from another player on your side, try and take a step into it to get your legs I want to say fired up, but that's not right. It's like to get them engaged. It's really tough for a lot of players, especially those who've had knee problems in the past or ankle problems or shin problems. We have a really tough time trusting our legs to carry the weight of our body. So I had a knee injury going into my high school career slash middle school volleyball career, and it really freaked me out and I didn't want to use my legs. And it took me a long time for me to get over that. And eventually I met my coach who I'm talking about and she gave me this advice of stepping into the ball, gaining some momentum to help you push that ball forward, if that makes sense. It doesn't work for everyone, it works for me, and it just gives me a sense of direction. And it keeps my legs engaged and my knee from not giving out. So with that platform that you're using to actually move the ball, you want this to be as flat as possible. So, I'll try and demonstrate the best I can. So you see here, let me even move my sleeves. So, this platform is the underside of your arm. I want this to be turned up, and it feels awkward. It feels awkward, but I, I promise if you practice it, you'll get used to it. So, you want the underside of your arm to be as visible as possible, and you don't want the the arm in your bone right here, I forget what it's called, but you want that, that bone to be turned out as much as possible because again, the whole bone thing, 
if there's more bones that the ball has to hit off of, the more angles it has to deal with, and it's not gonna be as accurate. So you want that to be as flat as possible to the point where if I put a plank on your platform, this thing right here, it should be able to press up against it pretty much perfectly. And that'll give you enough control so then you don't have to worry about nothing happening. Like you try and aim weird, if something happens, nothing will happen if your platform is straight and you have enough surface for the ball to hit off. Okay, here are some things that I notice when coaching girls for the first time on this. I always tell my practices all the same. We all start in passing and I pretend like you're all in the same skill level, which is nothing. So when I coach passing, I normally say the first thing you want to avoid at all costs is elephant trunk arm. Swinging your arms is the absolute worst thing you can do in volleyball because you swing your arms, you have no idea where that ball is going. Unless you are very skilled and you know exactly how the ball will react to what you're doing, no player, no, no one should be swinging their arms when passing a ball. And what I mean by that, I will show you, I will demonstrate. So I'm gonna swing my arms. I haven't done this in probably 15 years, sure. So what I mean is like that. I had no control, my knees were locked because when you're passing and you're swinging your arms, you don't need to use your legs at all. That is the absolute worst thing you could do. A perfect pass is where you have control. You're using your legs more so than you're using your arms. Your arms aren't meant to move. Like when you hit, when you get a really hard serve or a really hard ball, I just dealt with this with my last team that I coached. There was this one girl who had a very, very hard serve and people were always so afraid to get that ball received to them. And I said, you don't need to worry at all. And they were like, what, it's gonna hurt. And I'm like, yeah, it might hurt for like a second, but you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is have that nice platform and just go like this and the ball does the rest. You don't need to swing your arms to compensate for any of that. So the elements of a good pass, let's review. Feet, shoulder distance apart, weight on your balls of your feet. Your legs are engaged, your thighs and your calves are engaged from your sh weight shift. You're just kind of bent over like this and you're ready for that ball. So you can dive, you can jump, you can move backwards. And then your platform here, I like to do hand on hand, thumbs come together. And when it, the ball comes to me, all I have to do is do that. And I can do this, I can do this. And another thing my, one of my coaches taught me is that when you're passing, most people will just stick their arms out like this. And they'll be like, I'm done. And it's like, not quite. Your shoulders have a lot to do in volleyball. So in passing especially, you want your shoulders to come and almost meet your ears. You want them to shrug upwards. Again, feels very weird, but you want them to meet your shoulders because I don't know why, but I feel like it gives me more sense of, I know where my body is going, more control over what I need the ball to do. I don't know if this is a very, do this and your passing will be forever changed. I don't know, but it helps me. So when I pass, I'm in that position and I step forward just so I make sure I engage my legs and my legs are doing most of the work. The reason, <laughs> the reason volleyball players have such great asses is because all practice, we're basically squatting. This is what we do, all practice, all day for an hour and some minutes. This is nine times out of 10, this is what we're doing. And after a while, this is like equal to, I don't know, like a hundred squats or something. Like imagine doing this for like an hour or two. You need your legs to be engaged. I can't scream this loud enough. If your legs aren't engaged, you're swinging your arms. If you're swinging your arms, you have no control. And that is the absolute worst thing in volleyball. You need control. You need to know where that ball is going because if you don't know where your ball is going and you're trying to get it to your setter, you're making your setter run halfway across the court every time you pass a ball. And we don't want that because we love our setter. It's the hardest job.
I don't know how they do it, but that is the most important thing. If you could take away one thing from this video, it's that you need your legs to be engaged, you need to have control over the ball and where that ball is going, and you need to make sure that you're not swinging your arms. Okay, so I do agree with what I said about how control is basically the most important thing in volleyball when it comes to technical skills. If you don't have control of your actions and your body and where the ball is going, you're gonna have a really tough time making anything happen. However, something that I can't believe I didn't mention was that if you don't have a visualization of where you want the ball to go either, you're kind of screwed. What I mean by that is in your brain, you know when you get a ball, you have to pass it and that ball has to go somewhere. You need to know where that location is in your brain as well as see it. So in that split second where you're looking down to see where your the ball is landing on your arms, you need to already know where that ball is going to end up. That takes a lot of skill and it takes a lot of time. But when you master that aspect of technique, control, and visualization of where that ball is gonna be going, nothing can stop you. It is fantastic when the, those two aspects are combined together. I can't believe I didn't even talk about this. What the hey, Mara. But definitely super important. Definitely something I didn't know my first time going around. I wish I did, I wish someone taught me. That's why I'm here. These are the most important things. So, to demonstrate all of these lovely aspects, I will show you my perfect pass. And I'll show you a few practice things that I like to do at my house, considering I can't go to a court right now, since we are in COVID-19 era. Great. So, let me show you my perfect pass first. So, whenever I try and practice this, I want to make sure that I have a target wherever I am that's to my right diagonally. So you want it to be ahead of you about six feet and you want it to be to the right of you. So almost at a diagonal. Okay, this is the last one I swear because I'm so tired and I need to go to bed. But I keep saying uh, when you're practicing passing to have a target that's about six feet in front of you and to the right of you at a diagonal. The reason I'm saying this is only out of pure habit my position the one i played my entire life was middle or middle blocker as some people know depending on where you are uh and the way that's situated is that you have to be in a certain spot on the court and that was always on the left side for me when i was passing the left side of the court in the corner in the back so i would have to like send that ball all the way across the court diagonally to the right to get to the setter who could then pass it to one of our hitters. That's why I keep saying this. You do not by any means need to do this. Just pick a target that's in front of you about six feet because then that'll give you a range of different angles you can do. This is just me speaking out of just pure habit and is by no means the like be all end all, must be on a diagonal, no, no. As long as you have a target six feet away, that is fantastic. I do this because this is the most important thing when you're trying to figure out how to pass a ball to your setter, which will normally be on the right side of the court diagonal to you. It's just good practice. Wow, the sun is really coming out to play today. All right, so for instance, I have a bush right there, so that's where I'm gonna aim. Sorry, mom. I don't mean to wreck your bushes, but. Okay, so I'm gonna toss the ball fairly high, hopefully not in a tree, and I'm gonna go down and up. My shoulders came up with me. You saw my legs exploded on the bottom there, and it did hit my target. It went more up and then down, then horizontally, I guess. This is really important. This is another thing I want you to take away from this video. Something that was always really important to coaches and to myself when I coach is space equals time. What I mean by that is the more space upwards you can give your teammates, and I'm not talking like to the ceiling and back down or to the sky and back down in my case. No, what I mean is you're giving them enough space and time 
to figure out where the ball is and where they need to go. If you pass a shot that's right to their chest, no one can do anything with that. So what you wanna do is really get under the ball and pop it lots of time, lots of space to your setter. If they don't have a lot of time and space, they're running all over the place and it's a mess. So another takeaway, nice and high. You don't need to slam it to the ceiling. No, that's not necessary. If you have a net, you just want it to be above the net. That's all. Above the height of the net, which normally is about, for women, I think six or seven feet, depending on how competitive you are or how, uh, how advanced you are in the game. And a ball sent higher than the net is perfect. It gives your setter enough time to run to the ball, make a decision about who gets the ball, and to make the play accordingly. These are all super important parts of volleyball. I know this was a lot to talk about, but I know. I swear, this is the most crucial part. If you don't have a good pass, the rest kind of goes to crap. So, you need to make sure that this is important. You need to practice this. And with that, I will show you some of the ways I practice. So, when I practice normally, we're in the tree again, when I practice normally, it is against a wall. So, if you don't have a wall, I saw a really good trick online, which is you go to Home Depot or something, and you get, how do you say? It's not plywood, because it's not like a, it's, a, it's like a sheet of wood. Hard to describe, it's very, very thin, but you set it up on an angle, so then you can bounce balls off of it if you don't have a large wall connected to your house. I do, luckily. Um, I also live near a school, which has a really good wall that I use. So instead of using my house, I'll go over there on weekends, make sure there's no kids there, of course. And I will practice there because there's lots of space and I can hit it as hard as I want without hurting anyone or damaging something. But sometimes I like to practice in my backyard with nothing. So what I like to normally do is something a lot of people do, which is you do a pass to yourself shorter, and a pass to yourself higher, and a pass to yourself shorter, and a pass to yourself higher. Wow, the shadows are gnarly today. Okay. And that's honestly the best way to practice passing. If you do have a wall, my favorite thing to do is to chuck the ball against the wall, wherever it is, and you have to run to it and make sure you have that good foundation. So good athletic stance, knees bent, calves engaged, thighs engaged, weight on your balls of your foot, and you have to run, Get, make sure you get to the ball before it's about to come at you, and then nice platform, and then pop it back to the wall, and it'll bring you back. I know this sounds really boring, but passing is the most integral part of this game. Hitting is super fun, serving is super fun, setting is super fun, but if you can't pass a ball, you can't do any of that. So, this is the most important part of volleyball, by far, in my opinion. So, with that being said, that is the end of today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. As the sun blinds me, God. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Share it with your friends. Give me a thumbs up in the comments below. Let me know how you're practicing right now at home. I want to know. I want to hear it. And with that, that's all I got today. Thanks so much, you guys. And I'll see you in my next video. Good job, team.